Hey everyone, Karen at Weld Schooling Central. Today we answer the question, how much does it cost to weld school? Watch this to find out more. Hi everyone, I'm Karen King, creator of Weld Schooling Central, an information hub for weld schooling families and people wanting to learn about weld schooling. Today I want to answer the question, how much does it cost to weld school? To answer this question, I recently spoke with a range of weld schooling experts and asked them to share their budgets to help you understand more. Stay up to date with everything we do on our channel by clicking on subscribe and also click on the bell down below to make sure that you get a notification every time we answer a new question. Now let's hear from our world schooling families. When I first started world schooling, I just yeah thought when I like when I first heard of the concept and started looking into it and thinking about it, I was like, it's too expensive, we can't afford that. These people must have trust funds or they inherited money or they you know have a really good job or they made money in the stock market or whatever like no a lot of families most families are just they work as they travel or they save really hard in a normal life to be able to do this but because the cost of living is so low you know like you can do that i can absolutely guarantee you we have saved a fortune by being on the road i'll tell you Traveling around the world was so much cheaper than living in one place in the San Francisco Bay Area where the cost of living is super high. So it's much cheaper. I mean, we were spending so much less money traveling. It's way cheaper for us to travel than it is to live in New Zealand. We need a lot more money here in the States. It's like two or three times, <laughs> feels like, yeah. uh, as expensive to live here as it is anywhere else in the world for us. Traveling was cheaper. <laughs> because of taxes and because of insurance and because of so many things, everything We have come to the realization that it has been cheaper traveling than staying in the States. Um, we lived in Arizona, so it wasn't the most expensive part of America. Um, so we predicted uh, that our lifestyle would cost us about 40,000 New Zealand dollars, which I think is about 24, 25 US thousand per year. And that's pretty spot on to what we spend. You know, we are, are the type of travelers who are, we, I consider ourselves very uh, adventurous and very much interested in getting into the culture and understanding it and immersing ourselves, um, you know, and we are, we don't need five-star hotels at, by any stretch. Um, that's not, not what makes the, the adventure and travel for us exciting. So um, what, kind, what kind of traveler you are also dictates what kind of budget you're going to have to you know, create for yourselves. The cost of living in the places we chose as home bases as we were traveling was a lot lower. You like know? Bali, Mexico, I mean, okay, examples. We could go and rent a place long term. We rented a house in, in Bali for six, no, it was, it was like $5,000 a year. It was a three bedroom house with a pool, beautiful jungle view. Three to 4,000 a month and you're sitting pretty good, you know? Since we've been in Malaysia and in Vietnam, we are spending over the course of the whole month, which includes our flights, which I spread out over the period that we're in a country, our visas, our accommodation, our food, our activities, and our travel insurance each month cost us the same as we were spending in rent in New Zealand. Yeah, um, that to me is, it's crazy. For four or five US dollars, you could feed our family of four really well with amazing food. I mean, it's just, you're in heaven. It's just, you know, fantastic. We had a pretty nice villa for a thousand dollars a month. So that was accommodations, everything was included. Yeah, and then a, um, a lady comes, cleans it four hours a day, you know, helps you get whatever you need, water and all that stuff, so. And there was a pool there, so that was great. You can't get that for a thousand dollars here in Las Vegas, <laughs> probably most states in the U.S. Um, and then the food is so inexpensive that it really is so inexpensive to feed a family of five. Um, so that wasn't a huge cost. And then, and then we, whatever we, else. We, got, we had two scooters delivered to the villa when we first landed. We did 45 days in Chengdu, and uh, the scooters for 45 days for two of them was 70 bucks, and it came out to like a dollar fifty a day. So that was our transportation. Yeah, so we just rode scooters so, everywhere. Transportation, living expenses, food, it was pretty, and so, and then it's just money to do fun things. So whatever we were doing on top of that, um, places for the kids to hang out or going yeah. out to eat and then maybe a nicer place or whatever. 
but yeah, I would say 3,000 max. I mean, food, you go to eat out at restaurants and it's two, three, four dollars a plate for beautiful, amazing, gorgeous, gourmet, organic, vegan, whatever you want food from anywhere in the world. Uh, whereas here, it's like 10, 15, 20 dollars. We travel to places where our dollar would go far. So, um, and that's why I keep coming back to Southeast Asia. It was an amazing, enriching experience for so cheap. We traveled on the basis of massively reducing our costs. So here in Australia, when we were living, we were living on over you know, $150,000 worth of expenses a year. And we got it in under the first year in un to under 30,000 US dollars. And then even to less to like 25,000 US dollars. And for five or six years, that's the way we lived. We actually lived on on um, spending less than 25,000. When you go to work, you've got to have clothes to wear to work. You've got to have makeup. You've got to, um, you know, the kids have expenses. Food is hugely expensive here. We have to have two vehicles because we need that to get around the city. So all of those things totally add up. Um, and it just amazed us really how much we could, well, how little we could survive on, particularly in places like Asia. Um, but even Europe in some ways, like there's parts of Europe that are really, really affordable and way more affordable than the life that we were living. We, um, you know, we sold our apartment. Um, certainly we weren't working, so we, you know, didn't have income generation, but we had no expenses. And we lived, we, it was so cheap. You know, we, we realized, um, you know, the money that we made from selling our apartment and, um, you know, that was a cushion for us to feel comfortable traveling for seven months and not being concerned about money. We only pay for our accommodations and food, you know, and traveling around. So, so if you compare that to having a life back in that state where I had all those other expenses, like we live on a lot less now that we're traveling full time. So um, not having all these costs or like our kids went to gymnastics and to dance and then the school was not, we didn't pay for school, but, but still you had all kinds of little things. And then just the main thing is that you just spend money because you're, that's a country where you just spend money. You always want something more. And although when we moved from Italy, we were like, oh, we're not going to do this and we're not going to do that. We're not that kind of people you end up being that kind of people because you're bored, because you have everything and you don't know what to do. And so you're like, oh, let's just go for a walk to Mark, to Walmart or Target. And you end up coming home with bags full of stuff that you don't need. So that's a lot of money that you save. I wouldn't necessarily say that in New Zealand we were living paycheck to paycheck, but we weren't saving very much. We were mostly spending it because we wanted to have a nice lifestyle. We wanted to go for brunch, go for coffee, and go for weekends where we wanted to save for a holiday. So we were putting all of our money into certain things and there wasn't, you know, that much just left over. We were like, oh, well, this can go to long-term savings or do anything. Like we were just living life. Um, whereas here, if we could potentially, like our goal is to match his income with our online work between the two of us, I mean, God, if you had over $100,000 in Southeast Asia, like, you can do anything. <laughs> Go anywhere, be anything you wanted to be. Like, it's crazy. If you're going from country to country every two to three weeks, then yeah, it can definitely add up. But I think that if you're willing to kind of you know, kind of, again, have a, maybe a home base is a way to go where you're, you're staying in a place that's really, you know, affordable as a family. And then you, you know, take some trips out, you know, every, every once in a while from there. We just got into making our budget work and making it go further. Um, I worked remotely this last time round. Um, and but that was kind of cool in a way because I was getting paid in New Zealand dollars and then I was in Asia so that was like this is really good um, so we we're quite fortunate to be able to do that. And the cost of living here is a lot less than it is back home obviously but the fact that that's even possible is insane and I think that is a big block for people I know it was for me being like oh well traveling is expensive because holidays are expensive you go away for a week's holiday and you spend thousands of dollars I have friends who spend ten thousand dollars on a five-day holiday for their family but traveling as a lifestyle even if it's for a smaller period of time is very different to traveling for a holiday it all depends on what's your comfortability level 
and how much you want to spend. Because if you want to spend two thousand a month, you could, and people do. So I mean, some people spend five grand a month. Well, no, but if you wanted to go, like for people that say, "Oh, I can't afford it." Um, it's more expensive to go to California for a week, probably, than to live a month sure. somewhere, if like say in Southeast Asia. Two days in Disneyland will cost you as much as two weeks in Bali, including oh, Airbnb. Lord, yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy. Yeah, like I said, I think that is a really huge block for people is that it's expensive and it's really not. You can do it really cheap. The fact is you don't need to go crazy. You don't need to be wealthy. It's how you spend your money and how you make your money work for you. If you have a question you'd like answered, be sure to leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to check out our other Q&A videos and visit our website at worldschoolingcentral.com.